Okay everyone, so it's the a new introduction to the farm, yet to be named. Um, so we picked him up yesterday. So I just wanted to go through, when you're introducing an animal to your farm, um, what you should be doing. So this guy is going to be our future buck, if you can believe. We've gone from a big muscly boa goat, uh, he passed away last year of old age, uh, to this little fella. Why have we done that? Our goats are for milk. Uh, not for meat. So we had a boa goat with the thinking that uh, we'd use the meat from um, the kids, we'd raise them, sell them for meat, uh, eat their meat. We're not keen on meat um, and so for us it really is about just having uh, the dairy milk from, from our goats. So the idea is we bought a smaller buck, um, obviously it's going to grow, <laughs> to be part of our girls to aid them because they're struggling during birth. I don't know if you've seen the birth video, it's not great quality, but um, check that out. Um, you can see, I mean, she's like that anyway, but you can see when you have big boas, they've got big head and necks, and the cyan Nubian goats are just finding it too hard. So this guy comes into the picture. Um, here's a bit of a backstory. He's a rangeland goat. Now, if you're in South Australia, you'll see them quite readily. They are a cheap option for you. We've never had a rangeland goat, so we thought we'd give it a go. Um, but the backstory for rangeland goats, or for this one anyway, so I bought him off a lovely lady, um, young lady, and she basically saves these goats um, that would be destined for the abattoir, but not this guy, obviously, because he's too small. So what happens is they herd them in from the Flinders Ranges, uh, put them all on the truck, these guys will fall through the grates uh, so they can't take them with them, they're going to an abattoir anyway. So they knock them on the head and uh, that's the end of it. So she's collecting a few at a time and doing them up a little bit and getting them on a bottle and those kind of things and reselling them. So that's how he came into our life. Now he's not in great condition, that's for sure. So. She couldn't get him to take a bottle. I'm going to have a go now. Um, but first of all, I want to talk to you about what to do when you bring your goat onto your homestead. First thing I did yesterday was I, I de-liced him and fleed him. So I just used a pet shop brand um, because I didn't have the... We, we get someone in to do all our mob at the same time. Um, so I just got a pet shop brand that goes on the back of the neck. So he didn't actually look like he had lice and you can normally tell by running your hand backwards up there, um, up there just sort of next to their spine. The spine really does protrude. He's a rangeland goat, he's a skinny, he's a skinny breed. That's, um, so you can kind of just go to the side and you'll see the little lice or the little lice eggs on him. He's really enjoying that. So he doesn't actually look like he has lice, but that doesn't mean he doesn't. So I, that was the first thing I did. The second thing I did is I set up a home where he's on his own and has no contact with the other goats and sheep. So he's had no contact with them even through the fence. So we've given a nice barrier, they're over in another paddock, and he's up there. Why have I done that? We don't know what he has. So we want to make sure that we're not going to pass anything onto our um, our other animals. I'm about to worm him in a minute, but I am going to try and get some milk into him. Um, he is taking food, but I would just like him to get the nutrition of uh, the goat's milk. So this is our goat's milk, so I've just rewarmed it. It's probably gone cold now. Unfortunately, um, I lent my slow teat to someone else, um, so it is a fast teat, so that's not great. But he's not going to suck anyway. I know that because she couldn't get him on milk. But just because they don't suck doesn't mean you can't sometimes get them on milk. So just putting his mouth open a little bit. And that might be it, you know. That's all he might, he's quite adamant. So if this was one of my kids from one of my goats, um, I'll keep this going until he gets the suck reflex. So I'm just going to see how he goes with it because I'll be interested to see, to be...
There we go. So all I'm doing, because it's got quite a strong, and look at that, he's sucking. So I was told this little fella wouldn't take a bottle. That is taking a bottle. So straight away that tells me I'm going to be feeding this guy. I'm probably going to feed him because he hasn't been on a bottle for a little while. Oh, good boy. Look at that. So it may have been an experience from the person. The person may not have wanted to bottle feed. It might not have been goat's milk. She might have been doing cow's milk or a powdered milk. And it might have just been too different for this guy. But he's definitely, that is a fast flow tea. I'm trying not to tip it too much, but he's definitely taking that bottle. Is that nice, May? I didn't miss that. This will help, he's going to be a buck and as we know, um, male goats when they're, they're in rut, they can be a little bit um, pushy and not pleasant to be around. So the more handling we can give him now, the better it will be for us in the long run, um, especially with having five kids. So I am going to persist with giving him a bottle. And that'll help him bond with us as well. Now what you wouldn't want to do is just be pouring this down him, forcing it open and pouring him down, uh, it down him because you can drown them. Um, it's really hard when they're tiny little kids and they're born a little bit premmy and things like that. So if you bring a new baby goat to your farm and you've been told he's already off the bottle and he does look really small, consider if that's just something you've been told um, because someone wants to move them on quickly. Not saying that this is what's happened in this situation, but always make sure you're giving them the milk where you can that's best for them. So this is actual goat's milk. I think he's saying he's had enough. So it's probably only really in reality had about 40 mils so far. never suck on a bottle uh, for for weeks until they finally get it when they're, they're stronger and bigger. So um, just because they're not doing that sucking doesn't mean they're not taking the milk from the bottle. he's had enough. So when you bring your kid to the farm make sure he's a certain age if you're doing this for the first time. If you haven't bottle fed um, baby kids make sure you're getting a nice healthy one the first time from a friend because it can be a bit of a challenge. Now the next thing that this little guy's not going to like is worming. So when worming your goat, I use what's available in my local uh, fodder store. So this is just when they come onto the farm. I have a regular worming cycle and testing that I do, and that often goes with the shearing uh, cycle. However, um, he's new onto the farm, so he needs to be wormed, and those worms need to be treated prior to him going anywhere near any of our animals. So you can get these from your local fodder store. They'll have what's best for your local area. Um, some, some, um, some worms have resistancy and things like that. So go to your local fodder store and have a chat with them. The bottle has all the measurements and everything you need for the weight of your animal. You're just gonna draw it up in the weight, lift them up and pop it down the side of their mouth. Don't squirt it hard. 
just in little bits and I'll just drink it in like that. If you were to squirt it hard, you're likely to get it to hit the tongue or something and spit back. But if it goes down the side of the throat, they're just going to swallow that as they need. And that's done, he's wormed. So what have we done? We've um, brought the animal onto the farm, we've put it in a, um, its own quarantine, in a safe spot where foxes can't get it. Uh, we've introduced it back to milk if that's what it requires. If you're getting an animal that is on a bottle, ensure that you have seen that animal take from that bottle uh, before you bring it home if that's what you're choosing to buy. Um, we've done a bit of a health check of him prior to buying him. We've wormed him, we've treated him for the potential of mites and lice. And now the other thing is we've also brought home the food that he was having where he was. So he was on oat and hay and just on um, fetch basically. So um, just what they grow there had been baled up. So just normal kind of grass really. So those two things I've brought home with me as well. And then I'll slowly start substituting for what we use here. I've given him a mineral block um, in case he's lacking in any minerals. So he has access to that all the time. I've added a goat feed to his um, area, a good quality goat feed that I know has got good calcium in it. And I'm mixing some brewer's yeast in it. So if you're getting a goat, sometimes I can be lacking in B12. Um, so I just supplement that with a little bit of brewer's yeast in their food. Not a lot, especially at his age, uh, because I don't like the taste. So it might stop him from eating. So the biggest thing to consider when you're bringing a, any livestock onto your farm is how you are going to quarantine them from your other animals. Um, and that is really important for the longevity and the health and condition of your livestock that you should be able to do that. If you can't do that, that should be your focus before bringing more livestock on because if one of your livestock becomes ill or injured or something else, you will need to quarantine them. So you need to have something set up to enable you to do that. You should also have it set up so you can rotate your animals across and allow um, not to look at increasing worm burden and things like that. South Australia, um, you know, you can really get into trouble quickly with barbary pole and things like that and worm bird burden in your animals. So you need to be able to rotate your animals off those paddocks. So that's this little guy's introduction to Resonance Homestead. Um, what I will do in the next couple of days is I'll actually give him a bath. So if he did have lice and there's any dead eggs or dying eggs or anything like that, that he'll um, have all of that washed off of him. I use my own soap that I make for that with a little bit of neem oil in it. And neem oil acts as a repellent for those kind of things as well. Um, he has got horns that haven't been debutted. We don't, we've debutted once here and we'll never do it again. Um, so I'll just start uh, rasping those. So I need to sharpen, get a new sharper rasp just to keep them um, an adequate size. His hooves are obviously okay because he's a little bubba, but they're another thing that you want to check um, when you are looking at purchasing, but we won't talk about purchasing today. But that's all he really needs uh, doing, and um, he is ready to go to sleep after that bottle that he's had. Um, so I'm going to go pop him back. He's got his goat food up there, uh, so a constant supply to, of things to nibble on. And we'll see how this little fella goes on Resonance Homestead. Thanks everyone and I hope a little bit of this resonates with you.